Muslimun. Don't die without having surrendered to Allah. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our praise will never be enough. We continue to thank Allah and our thanks will never be enough. And then we remind ourselves, we're not made for this world. This is not our home. We're only visitors. Let's not get caught up. Let's be content and satiated in this insatiable world. This world is like salt water. The more you drink, the more you need. <laughs> it never satiates you. This world, we're not made for this world. We're only passing by. And then we go to our eternal home, inshallah, in paradise, in the afterlife. And here, we don't cling to this world. We cling to Allah. We don't cling to this world. We're passing by. We will be, we'll vanish and we'll be dust and decay. What's it worth to be, to be obsessed with anything in this world? Whether it's image, money, success, popularity, all of it vanishes. All of it. And then we return finally to our maker. We return to our maker. Allah promises in this world, whatever you give for Allah, you wafa ilaykum, will be repaid to you. Whatever you give, you wafa ilaykum. These are God's words, not mine. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ You won't be wronged. Whatever you give, you have a hundred thousand, you give it away, you wafa ilaykum. Do you believe God? <laughs> These are Allah's words, you wafa ilaykum. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ You won't be wronged. These are Allah's words. We return to our Maker to be asked how did we do and what did we do? Did we honor our mother? Did we honor our father? Was our mother scared to ask us for something? Did our mother desperately miss our voice? Did we, did we know the favorite, the things of our mother and father? Did we visit them adequately? Or were they scared to ask us for something because of how we'd react? Because we did them tarbiyah to our mothers and fathers. So now they're scared to ask us. Or do we remember them when we go to the, that special shop, whether it's a donut place, whether it's a cookie, whether it's something, do we remember them and say, Mama, I brought you this. Or Mama, I wish I could have brought you this. And if they've passed away, do we pray for them? Do we visit their friends? This is, this is the journey of this world, and we're all passing by. Every week there are announcements of those that passed by, and may Allah forgive all of those who've passed by, and make this a gentle journey for us, inshallah. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, nieces and nephews, the Qur'an is the nourishment for the Ummah. The Qur'an is the nourishment for the Ummah. There's a paradox in this life, in this world, that Allah gave us free will. We're this unique creature that we have free will, but then Allah says, submit, do Islam, and choose His will instead of your will. With that free will, choose, align your will with his will, and that's Islam. So it's this paradox, this beautiful, this beautiful paradox. And the heart rusts, the heart oxidizes, it rusts. And they asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what, can, what should we do if it rusts? How can we polish it? Oh Rasulullah, this heart, this spiritual heart, how can we polish it? with the Qur'an. And so I ask myself, I ask all of us here, how is our relationship with the Qur'an? The one complaint of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Qur'an is that, Ya Rabbi, inna qawmi takhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. My Lord, my people, my people neglected the Qur'an. Are we, are we one of those people? Are we going to be one of those people? 
How can we spend hours and hours and weeks and months and years and days mastering engineering, mastering software coding, mastering medicine? The Quran, oh. Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, if you read the Quran two times a year, then you're not considered one of those who abandoned the Quran. Two times a year. But there's five, there's five ways, there's five ways in which we can possibly neglect the Quran or abandon the Quran. The first way is sama'ihi, listening to it. Do we, en do we enjoy it? Do we raise our children to enjoy listening to it? Do we have, do we find that favorite reciter and play it? Do we listen to it enough sufficiently? Even if we're not proficient in reading it, do we listen to it? So this is sama'ihi, right? The first one. And by the way, <laughs> the Quran is miraculous. If it fell to an inanimate object, an inanimate object, the mountain, the mountain would crumble. So how about if it comes to us? How about if it comes to our hearts? What's going to happen to us? What's going to happen? There is going, this is a miracle from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Plants, there have been studies by, by playing the recitation or reading the recitation of Qur'an on plants and how it affects them. And the proof in that is that in the Qur'an, the mountain crumbles. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if we revealed it to a mountain, it would crumble. So how about us? If we play it, sama'ihi. Number two, number two is al-amal bihi, acting upon it. Acting upon it. Some, someone might read the Qur'an and it curses him. Why? Because the Qur'an says, curse be upon the liars. <laughs> Do we act upon the Qur'an? And this is the second, the second way in which we can neglect it. The third way, and this is a beautiful, amazing way. Tahkim <laughs> bihi. Deferring to it, referring to it. And this is critically important for us in our time because we are the entitled generation. We are the entitled Americans. We are the entitled that customized, personalized. You personalize everything. You personalize everything. From, from, we personalize everything from our coffee to our ice cream to our burrito. Everyone has their exact customized everything. You don't like it, return it. You don't like it, return it. Everything is customized. But then we actually have to say, no, I have to. It's not about submitting to my will, it's submitting to Allah's will. And this is one of the secrets for protecting our marriages. Why? Because if, if, my, if I'm a husband and it's all about my rights and my feelings and, and my thoughts, and that's one of the three destroyers, being so impressed with my opinion is one of the destroyers, right? Instead of deferring. So if I'm like that and the wife is like that, that's it. We're all about my rights. That's all we see is how my rights are not taken care of. Instead, let's defer. Let's defer to a greater level of virtue as advised by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the greater level of virtue as advised in the Qur'an. Then, then we have something to coalesce around. Yes, because it's not about what I want, what I feel. It's about what Allah wants. What does Allah want? Ah, I see. And reminders benefit believers. Reminders benefit believers. We wake up. These reminders wake us up. And so this is very important that we have this deference to the lofty meanings in the Qur'an and by, exemplified by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The fourth way we can abandon the Qur'an, the fourth way we can abandon the Qur'an is tadabburihi, contemplating it, reflecting upon it and understanding it, right? And we have access now, if we're just in our car, we can play a podcast of tafsir 
It's so easy. And don't, and don't think I have to do the whole tafsir of the whole Qur'an. The mir- uh, miracles from the outside, miracles from the outside are actually from the inside doing the same little thing every day. I, I know someone, I know someone, he said, two days ago, it was January 10, he said, you know, in 2024, I've done 1,000 push-ups. I'm like, what? 1,000 push-ups already? He's like, it's only 100 a day. But it feels like 1,000, whoa! That's this, from the outside, it looks like a miracle. From the inside, it's just doing the same little thing every day. All of a sudden, 40 days pass. All of a sudden, 60 days pass, 90 days pass. Adwamuha wa anqal. Allah loves most of all the consistent, even if small. And so we play this. We have enough time. We have enough time. We know we don't, we don't give up. We don't give up on trying, figuring out ways how to increase our salary. We don't give up ways on figuring out how to increase our savings. And we'll never give up also on figuring out how to get closer to the Qur'an. How to get closer to the Qur'an. It's our intercessor in the next life. Our shafi' in the next life. It illuminates our homes in this life. Illuminates our homes in this life. The shaitan doesn't enter our home for three days if we recite Baqarah. <laughs> These are all from a hadith. This is amazing. And the fifth way that we can possibly neglect and abandon the Qur'an is that we don't do istishfa' bihi, tadawi bihi. We don't seek, use it as a remedy, as a cure. In this materialistic age, in this materialism age, in this scientism age, there are, al-fatiha is, is a ruqya, al-fatiha is shifa. Sadaqallahu al Allah has spoken the truth. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ we, we reveal in this Qur'an what's a shifa, what's a cure for people in their chest, in their lives. Seek forgiveness from Allah, for indeed He forgives all sins. Alhamdulillah, 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 wa salatu wa salam wa ala khayri khalqillah. There was a man, he was uh, not Arab. He was not Arab. And uh, the Qur'an was being recited and, and he was tearing. <laughs> and, they, and they asked him, he said, Anta ajami, you're not Arab. You're not Arab. What, what's happening? And so he said, Lisani ajami wa qalbi arabi. He said, My tongue is ajami, but my heart arabi under, under connects with the Quran. How many times have there been guests, seekers of Islam, where you sit for one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours talking about Islam, and then you recite Fatiha, and all of a sudden a tear comes down her eye. A tear comes down his eye. <laughs> First time they hear it, they're like, what's that? What's going on? So if a mountain could be moved, if a mountain could be moved, what are we doing? What are we doing? And so I invite all of us to have a daily regimen of Qur'an. A daily regimen of Qur'an. And it can be small. It can be small and it adds up. It can be small and it adds up. Allah loves most of all the consistent even if small. So I invite all of us to come back to the Qur'an and when we win these micro battles, Allah takes care of the macro battle. Allahumma ameen. We take care of our micro moments, Allah takes care of the macro. Because we're all in pain. We're all in pain. It's hard to talk about, how to think about, hard to read about, how to, hard to look at. But the ummah is waking up, and this is the nourishment for the ummah. The Qur'an is the nourishment for the ummah. So wherever we are, let's reintroduce ourselves. And don't let shaitan, shaitan wants to take us to any extreme, too much or too little. He doesn't care which one it is. Too much or too little. 
And so when someone does too much, it weighs heavy on him, he can't sustain it. So we need to have a reasonable amount, a, a small reasonable amount. And as Imam Abu Hanifa said, if we read the Qur'an twice a year, we won't be those who abandon it. But it's the practice to try to read it once a month, once a month, 30, one juz a day. If not, then once every two months, 10 pages a day. And, and then we will see the barakah and the blessings and the openings, inshallah. And so again, let's not be those who neglect or abandon the Qur'an. Let's put it in our life. Let's enjoy it. Let's... Let's listen to it in these five ways. Let's listen to the Qur'an. Let's act upon the Qur'an. Let's defer to the Qur'an and Qur'anic principles in our marriages. Right? Let's understand and reflect upon the Qur'an and let's use it for shifa. If you know someone who's sick, recite Fatiha for them multiple times. Our old generations, our grandparents, when someone had a baby, when someone was sick, you know what they would give them as a gift? They would say, I'm giving you as a gift 1,000 qul huwa Allahu ahad. <laughs> Bu'jah. I'm going to read for you 1,000 fatiha and, give, send, and make my intention that this is for you as a gift. And this is real. This is our tradition. We are our tradition of the physical and the metaphysical, of the material and the spiritual. This is our day, this is Friday, inshallah. So when we turn home, we become Ahlul Qur'an, whom Ahlullah wa khasatu. The people of the Qur'an, they are the special people of God and his select chosen ones. And so let's reintroduce this, inshallah, in our lives. And by the way, when you do it, if you're the leader of your household, if you're the father, if you're the mother, you do it gently by modeling it. Whatever you model, your children will absorb. Your children will reflect even without even mentioning it. The best, way to, the best way for them, for anyone to perfect, to get to perfection is just repetition. You just do repetition at the perfection, inshallah, without being heavy-handed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك ولا يذل من وليت ولا يعز من عديت تبارك تربنا وتعاليت لك الحمد والشكر على ما قضيت نستغفرك اللهم من جميع الذنوب والخطايا ونتوب إليك Oh Allah let us be walking Qur'ans like our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the walking Qur'an let us reflect the Qur'an in our character, in our words. In, let, let us have the light of the Qur'an. Let it be our intercessor in the next life. Let it illuminate our homes in this life. Let it polish our hearts. Let it polish our souls. Let it polish our beings and our characters, Ya Allah. Help us. Let us not be those who neglect the Qur'an. Let us not be those who abandon the Qur'an. Ya Allah, help revive our hearts. Revive the Ummah, Ya Allah. We're turning to you. Ya Tawab, you accept those who turn to you. You accept those who turn to you, Ya Allah. Accept us, Ya Allah. Accept this Ummah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, O oh Allah. O oh Allah, we surrender ourselves to you. We turn our attention to you. We entrust our affairs to you out of love and fear of you. And we depend and we lean on you. There is no escape from you except to you. We recommit right now, we recommit right now to a daily touching of the Qur'an. A daily touching of the Qur'an. Oh Allah, give us victory over shaitan. Give us victory over our nafs. Give us victory over the dunya. Give us victory over materialism. Help us give. Ya Allah, don't let us be impressed with our own opinions, Ya Allah. Help us give and let us be from the generous and not from the stingy or the greedy. Ya Allah, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. And send peace and blessings on our Master Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Take care of our mothers, our fathers, our elders, our scholars, our communities, our institutions. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Inna